Hello, and welcome back to the dev blog. Today, we are going to be uh, throwing some more stuff into the common mod. I actually was uh, just scrolling through the nodes here, and this is part of the ground mod. And I stumbled upon the realization that I have a mesh for the ground snow, and I am defining selection box and collision boxes here. But I could uh, skip that by throwing it into the common mod. And this actually makes sense to do because a slab that is one-fifth of a node tall sitting on the ground makes sense for various reasons to be used multiple times. And I don't know why I called it one-tenth when I could have called it one-fifth slab. I'm going to have to figure out a better naming scheme, I'm sure, though, because this doesn't tell me if it's bottom or top or anything like that. But whatever, that is all right. This should work just fine to uh, grab from common because it'll pretty much look everywhere. Um, so I shouldn't have to do anything special for that. I do have to add a depends file to the ground mod now. Depends.txt. And I just need to add in the line common. So now it'll load the common mod before it loads the ground mod, which makes sense for a slew of reasons, not the least of which is because common is being used by a lot of mods and it has a lot of repetitive stuff in it. So it makes sense to load that first so everything else has what it needs available. So we are going to go ahead and create a new collision box here. Common, column box. And we're going to do, oh, I can't. And I can't do a dash either. Ew. How in the, that's underscore, one underscore five underscore slab. Man, that's disappointing. I was hoping I could use a division sign slab. Uh, whatchamacallit, symbol. You know the backslash or is that a forward slash whichever okay well let's just go ahead and copy this data right here and pop it in right there so we have that and you know what this is kind of silly to do it just wastes line and it doesn't really improve readability at all I'm just gonna put the two on the one line it's not gonna hurt anything I don't believe I need a comma after that. I guess we're going to find out real soon. All right. And then let's just grab this string right here. And we are going to go ahead and replace this whole bit with that. And we'll do the same here. And that cuts out several lines of code here. Uh, and reduces file size a very negligible amount because after all we are talking about text and for anybody that knows anything about computer systems text takes up like the absolute least amount of space ever now unfortunately i don't have any of that snow on me and i'm not in creative of course i'm not however i can just do give me ground snow 99 and i have them in hand let's go place them on the grass so they'll actually be visible hey what do you know the model works just fine the collision and selection box work just fine as well this is a wonderful thing oh happy day oh happy day that's wonderful all right now let's go ahead and just look through here and see if there's anything else that uses special collision box or anything. I don't think there is, but it doesn't hurt to check. No, there isn't. Okay, good. So that's everything for ground. Nothing in gamer has to be modified. Metals are all just fill nodes and objects, so that's all good. Uh, spawn does have some stuff yet. If I go ahead into objects here. Uh, actually, that one kind of has to be that because those are all pretty specialized. The floor has a lot of 
stuff here. Ramp 2, I believe, uses a stair-like. Yes, it does. So Collision Box Ramp 2 does not need to exist anymore. And I will just grab the Collision Box stair here. And we'll go ahead and put that in for Ramp 2. And this will now have to depend upon common, which I th think it already does. Yes, there's already a depends file there. So let's go ahead and we're going to turn creative mode on just so I can easily grab the ramps. And let's take a look here. Um, oh, yeah, because you have the left and the rights for these. I'm just going to take ones that are non-colored. And let's go ahead and place the bottom and then the upper. And what do you know? That works. That has the normal stair. Also, if I do stair here, and I did this one in a previous video, it uses the exact same collision box as that. I meant to put it sideways facing the same way. Not that we can really see the collision boxes too well doing that, but they are the same. So, a little less redundant code. I feel like these, if these are both the same, you can probably eliminate one of them. We's gonna find out. We's gonna find out right now. Let's see what happens. I don't even know which, which bit that was on. That was on ramp two. Well, um, let me try this. Oh, ah, that's weird. So that works, but this doesn't. So this is still acting as a full collision box. That's silly. Well, let's try switching this around. Let's do the selection box. I just feel like it would fall back to one if both are not defined. So now it has a full selection box, but still uses the... Okay, so you do have to have both. Simple as that. It's not a huge deal. Like, I guess whatever. If I have to, I have to. Ain't gonna kill me. Um, and I th think that might be it. Kind of on the short side here. Unless I go ahead and fix a model, but I don't know if anybody really wants to watch that. So I have, I believe it's this one. Let me go ahead and throw some cobble out here. So we have something to demo it against. Oh wait, nope, that one's right. It's the inside corner. Or outside corner, rather. That one's an inside corner. Here we go. So that's placed correctly. You can see that it's lowest in the center. And then it's the shallowest on the outside. But the uh, texture on it's the wrong direction. Which obviously is not what we want. And it's, whoops, I don't know whose fault that really is, because if I place this that way, which that would be the right way for it to be placing, when you place it, it should place, because that's the way it shows in your inventory, yep. So the model seems to be rotated incorrectly, is my assumption. Now I can, um, I think I can pretty easily fix this. Let's open Blender up here, Spaceship. Figure out which layer the floor is on. Figure out which floor that piece is, which is this one here. And. <clears throat> I don't know. I'm going to rotate it 90 degrees, I guess. 
and we'll see if that works. And if it's wrong, then we just rotate it the opposite way and fix it. It's going to be in models, and that is outside corner. And I'm going to go ahead and use my mind test presets or write the file. And let's see. That was the wrong direction. For as you can tell. Oh, wait, let me. Let me try this out the right way here. So if that's that way, I should be placing it like so. Nope, I should be placing it like... What? Oh, because the UV map. Oh, I wonder if that's not all that's messed up on this. Let me get a few corners here. Or edges. Wait, what? Did I just literally grab... Shorted? I wanted a walkway edge, thank you very much. So we have an edge, we have an edge, which shouldn't really be that way, but whatever. And I'll just put edge and an edge. The outside corner, per what I am seeing here, is now totally messed up. Because I would literally have to be where there's nothing to place it. How could I be there? Oh, this is confusing me now. How is this supposed to be? It's supposed to be so if you're here, you can place it there. So this is... So basically what I need to do is rotate the model 180 and then adjust the texture. Okay, well that's easy enough. Rotate on the Z180. Mm-hmm. And... Uh, Let's go ahead and export that to an OBJ. Yep, right over it, please. Thank you very much. And let's try this out. We now have, if everything went according to plan, which I'm sure it did. Hey, it lines up the right way. Nice. My textures are still messed up, though. So let's see about fixing that. And then is this one? Oops, that one's wrong, but this should be placed like that, right? Yep, yep, that looks, that looks right to me. So now, I need to fix the texture. How do I do that? Well, let's see, outside corner. I'm using the outside corner PNG. So I could, I suppose, modify the texture. There's really no right way to do this, I guess. Textures, outside corner. Okay, and how do I need to rotate that again? I should probably stand on top of it. So if this is how it exists in the file, and it needs to exist this way, I need to rotate it clockwise 90 degrees. That seems silly to me, though, because it makes sense to be that way. So I should really rotate the UV mapping on the top and bottom faces counterclockwise 90 degrees. Because that will effectively do the same as rotating the texture clockwise 90 degrees. If I did this right, I'm a genius. Start throwing your gold coins at me, people. All right, well, that pesky little problem has been rectified. So that's good. And let's just take a look here. Let's go ahead and get some rails. I have an angled rail. Well, I don't have any angled pieces, so I don't really need an angled rail. I do think that's a problem, though. So I can put my rails here. But notice there's a problem when you have a corner. Because there's no rail for that. So you can literally walk off and fall into the engines and die. Who is the engineer that designed these pieces? He needs to be pushed over the edge where there's no rail into the engine. Hmm. 
Well, I have two options. Either I can always use an angle in the corner, which would make sense. Because uh, I made this lovely angle texture. And I can place it. I can sneak through there. I can place it here and place the angled. But then I can't fit through here. So then I need to use the floor piece like this to do that. Which is fine. You know, I kind of feel like you'd want a walkway to be wider than just a single node here anyways, because that's kind of narrow. I mean, I could see in some places you may only have the space to do that. But any place where you expect people to be walking, I would think you would want to have wider, because otherwise, what if people need to pass each other up? You couldn't pass somebody on this, but on this you can. So I, I just bet it would probably be wise to make a 90 degree corner for the rail. Is it worth doing on video? Probably not, but you know what? Gonna do it anyways. Because this should literally take, like, no time. Alright, so I have some rails here. Let's go ahead full screen this. I have no idea what I just did other than messing that up. Object is camera, no. I do not want object is camera. Shift C to, uh, Pretty much centering your views otherwise the home key I think actually does the exact same thing okay so we are going to uh, pretty much take these doubles Ooh, you know what? we're just gonna use the doubles shift D to duplicate that I'm going to push this double over one space and then we're going to use this and we're going to call this fence corner whoa and then we will tab into edit mode and we're gonna select one face on each of these three objects control plus numpad plus key to increase selected faces R to rotate rotate 90 degrees hitting the control key to constrain rotation and for some reason, this does not look like that matches perfectly. Because it doesn't. Control Alt Q to exit quad view. Number seven on the numpad to go to top view. Z to pull up the pie menu here. And we will select wireframe. And the recess on the outside is two. Inside is three. Is that correct? Yes, outside is two, inside is three. It appears to be set back one tenth of a node. So let us figure that out, which I have no idea how I'm going to do that because it should be right about here. But I don't know what that number equals out to. Let's just try 0.4. The worst that can happen is that it's totally wrong. 0.5. Okay. That basically is not working. 0.42, let's try 0.425. Um, 0.415? Point, 0.4125. Okay, I don't know. I would like for it to match up perfectly there, but I don't know. 41765? I don't know, man. Then we're going to take those and move them over one. And I missed something. Yeah, you can get the top face. What? So it's going to take longer than I had anticipated originally. This is unacceptable. All right, let's grab these again. Top one as well, please. Thank you very much. And select all of them, and I might just end up eyeballing. G key. And then the arrow keys to tweak the location. I'm going to say that's perfect. Okay. It's probably good enough. 
Um, uh, that does pose an odd situation here, though. Oh, I know why. Okay, so this... Grab it with the G key, hold down the control key, and I can move it over one-tenth. That looks like that lines up pretty much perfectly. Um, maybe this should be... Maybe that should be zero, actually. Yeah, so let's set it to zero. That looks right. And actually, I suppose I could select this. And it's got 0 0.05 and 4150. So that 07 should not be, that 0.7 should be gone. So we will fix that by, again, selecting everything, doing that. Wait, now that number is totally different. Okay, whatever, I'm going to say it's good. We'll go on top view here, and we'll see this front face sticking out. So we're going to move that back, and there we go. It is perfect. It really isn't because we should not have these nodes overlapping each other because we will get flickering issues. So what we're going to do is the upper one, we will pull back to there. And on the lower one, we're going to pull back this one. So they kind of bump up to each other. So if I select the whole lower piece here and pull it out, there is a seam. Let me put solid mode. There's a seam right here. And on the top one, the seam is there. So the seams don't match, uh, which I guess would make it stronger. But we'll, we'll go with that. It makes it stronger. That's the reason they do it that way. Okay, is this the right rotation? I have no idea. We're going to export it. Export as an OBJ. Uh, where is our rails? We have rail double. Well, we're going to call this rail corner. And we're using our mind test layup. Okay. Then all we have to do is uh, pretty much copy one of these. Wait, this is floors. Let's go to rails. Let's do it in the right file. I'll have to do the collision box, but I'll do the off camera because that's going to take me a while to figure out. We'll take and copy the double here. And we will call this rail corner. Corner ship description RD. Well, it's going to be RC for rail corner. The file name is going to be rail underscore corner. And spawn rail overlay. That looks right. And we should have four new nodes waiting for us in inventory. Let's, let's look it up here. Rail. We now have rails. Um, I feel like these colors are not set properly. There's something to muck with those textures. And we... Oh, yeah, because it's using the double. Okay, so we need to rotate that. We also need to do something with the colors because that's... It's messed up. We're going to select everything with the A key and rotate. And I think we need to rotate a full 180. And we'll tab back to object mode. I'm going to save the file. And then we have to re-export. And we can just overwrite. Launch Blender again. We still have the rail in hand. And the rail goes in perfectly. But not perfectly. Because there's a little bit of an offset between that and that. And I'm caught on that collision box. It actually wouldn't even be a bad idea to use the corner collision box for testing. But what I want to figure out is why... Why are these center ones not the spindles? Why are they not textured as they should be? The angled ones here are all textured. Oh, actually, right there, an angled one is. And it's using all the same code. Everything should be set up the same. 
Spot overlay rail ship value. Yep. Yep, that all looks right. So the only question is, is there something wrong with the export? But there can't be, because I exported the floor, and that worked just fine. We have normals. We are including UVs. We have material groups. Okay, that all looks right. Let's go ahead and UV editing. And let's see what we get if we select all of the yellow pieces here. Okay, so that's... That looks like it's working right. Let's go to mods, spawn, texture. I guess that's not a valid image name anymore. Okay, um, it should be rail something. I don't honestly know. Spawn rail overlay. Yep. And let's change this to texture mode. So we have the overlay on all of those. And actually, let's grab the other nodes here and select all of those and go ahead and open the spawn rail blank. All right, so this is working as expected. I don't think anything changed, but you know what? Let's go ahead and re-export it just in case maybe something got messed up. I don't know what could have, but it's worth a try. And no, still no texture. That is so bizarre because everything else works fine. I mean, I'm selected on different textures there, but that makes no difference to anything. The code is all the exact same. The only thing that's different in it is the model being used. Very interesting. Spawn row blank, and then we overlay the texture. The texture is the second to last thing, which is a spawn rail overlay, PNG, and then we're using ship val, which ship val is um, ship's parts color, which comes from here. Ship's parts color is the colorized string right there. So there literally is nothing different between these. So there's something wrong with the model itself, I assume. Interestingly enough, it also is putting that the wrong way. So that's not much help either. But at least it at least it does put the wall piece in the right way. Well, I'm going to figure out why this texture is not working. Whoops. But I think that's a off-camera thing because this has really got me scratching my head and I don't know what the what the solution is. So it's going to take a while to figure out, and I don't think everybody really wants to watch me figure it out. So I'm going to turn the camera off here and make it work. All right, so I figured it out, and uh, needless to say, it was pretty bizarre. I don't even really know why this code was working before, but it turns out... My old code had two textures. We had the rail blank and then we had spawn floor blank. That second texture was not needed at all. The way the rails are all set up as models, if you look at the UV layout of any of them, and if I set this to be the right material, which would be the spawn rail overlay, the top and bottom of it fit perfectly between the dots on the spindles. And every single mesh is the same way. So everything was working before I exported it because it was only actually one material. 
on here. Which is odd because they had two materials set up here. I when I say they, I, I'm the one who made this. But it's set up as two materials. And even in the layout here, it's two materials. And I discovered this because I switched them around. And that's when it became apparent because suddenly the top rails were the one color and the spindles were a different color and it was switching back and forth between the two. So as a final test, I'm going to switch those back the way they originally were, still only defining one texture for it. And yep, still works. I have noticed, however, and it's hard to tell because of that goofy collision box I have running on here, but these edges don't really match perfectly. And that is a huge no-no. You can see what I mean when I climb up here. You can kind of see... Oh, it's hard to see there. They don't line up perfectly. And I'm not sure why, but it is unacceptable to me. But that I'm going to fix off camera because that's just going to be a lot of little nitpicky tweaks. And nobody wants to see that. So... There you go, the problem's fixed. Yay! Bunch of different random stuff done in this video. But uh, hopefully you learned something out of it. Uh, if nothing else, that I am a little OCD. Because that being off by that teeny bit is bugging me so much that I'm going to fix it. And that's that. So thanks for watching, and I will see you next time.